Hey y'all, how's everybody doing? I don't have a piece of paper. I don't even have a scripture handy. Um, and yet I have to tell you something that's on my heart because I just got back from a funeral. A funeral where a, uh, a person had to say goodbye to a family member. And um, that family member had really had some struggles, and, and it just made me realize, um, it didn't make me realize, it's not something I don't already know, it's something I need to be reminded of, and so I felt like maybe you did too. And that is that we are not defined by our failures or our struggles. When you have given your life to Christ, and what does that mean? When you said, you know what, Lord? I've tried my whole life to be my own God, and it hasn't worked out too good, and I hear that you are the one and only true God. And I choose by an act of my own free will to believe that. I'm just making the decision that I'm going to believe that. And I ask you, God, to show me yourself, the one true God, the great I am, Emmanuel, God with us. Holy Spirit, shine down on me, live within me, go before me, comfort me, guide me, correct me, whatever you want. I'm no longer my God. You're my God. And I'm going to follow you the best I can. You know, when you turn your life over to Jesus like that, and you mean it, you mean it from the heart. God, only God knows the heart. Uh, and He knows it's weak. He made it weak. He made you fragile. And some of you are going, no, Beth, he makes us strong. He made us from dust. <sighs> Absolutely. Disintegratable. There is only one place we get real strength. And he knows that it's him. And he has to teach us how to tap into him. How to lean on him. How to tap into that strength that is his that is an overcoming power compared to this world. The Bible tells us, greater is he that is in me, God, the Holy Spirit that chooses to come live in me when I choose to make him my God. That power in me is greater than any power in this world. Now, what does that look like in everyday living? That's why I always recommend the Life Application Bible because it's talking about taking the Bible and applying it to your life. What does that mean? Because, you know, if somebody is uh, seeking out Jesus and, um, y'all, I know I have a terrible habit of just fiddling with my hair, and I do. I'm sorry. Try to ignore me. I don't ignore my words. Um, when we are... Um, when we let God take over our lives, what that will look like is less and less of ourself. Um, first of all, it means staying in the Word of God because the more you read it and meditate on it and pray over it and repeat it into your mind so that it really takes, uh, it becomes a part of who you are. It becomes a part of your heart. Your heart is kind of your center. Um, and that's why we see so many scriptures about the heart. And I'm going to do a, um, a Your Name series on that. So I'm not going to talk about that right now. But, but it's true. The heart is the center of who you are. And with all the labels that you can have in this world, whether it is a person who is depressed, a, an addict, alcoholic, a, um, well, all the kinds of addicts, where something has a power over your life. Um, just like a disease would. It's not something you invited. It just... Or, or maybe you did invite it. Maybe you did something to catch the disease. I don't know. Maybe we'll put it that way. Uh, but not always. Not always. Um, but when you partake of it, some people can turn and walk away and some can't. And the difference... Only God knows why that is. And that's why sometimes those addictions are referred to as a disease because it's not something that you can just make well like that. And I know people have submitted their lives to Christ who uh, call Jesus their Savior, who try to walk that out 
like we are supposed to walk it out and not just say it. And yet, they still have failure after failure. And people say, well, they just must not be saved. Well, there is not a person on this planet that does not walk out failure repeatedly. And God forgives us. Um, and when asked, he said, seven times seven becomes 70 times seven. In other words, the implication there is infinitely. And only God knows at what point he says, okay, we're done here. But I don't think it's a matter of forgiveness. It's when it's a matter of having a, whole, a hard heart that won't even listen. That's a different thing. When the Holy Spirit calls and calls and calls and calls and only God knows when he says, okay, I've called you enough and I've given you every opportunity and I'm done. That would be a horrible day indeed. Y'all do not push God to that limit. Do not. And sometimes I know people do that in bad behavior. They do that because they think, if I push hard enough, he'll give up on me. He won't give up on you. But it, you have to at least, by an act of your own free will, reach. And what you'll find out is you reach, you'll see those hands were already reaching for you before you ever reached. Before you took a step, there was already a path waiting. And we just have to, by our free will, agree to do it. Do what, Beth? What do I do? Turn your life over to God. Get in His Word. Try to live how He tells you to. You're not going to be able to do it. That's why He went to the cross. But your heart is to be for Him and for His ways. And He, and he will teach you. And over time, He will mature you. And it won't be that you'll be more successful at living right, even though you will. You will, actually. That's not the point. It's that your heart will be more for Him than it is for this world. And you'll live differently that way. You know, I thought I'd learned that lesson. I feel like I'm learning it all over again. And can I just tell some of you older ones? He's always teaching us. We'll think we got this thing down pat. And he'll say, mm, we're going to go over this one again, my friend. My daughter. He calls us both friend and daughter. Wow, what honors. We're so undeserving. He's so full of grace. We are not deserving. But he says we are, so we are. He proved that he believes that by going to the cross. Giving up his life. Coming back from the grave and saying, and I'll do that with you too. And that's where the fear of death and the fear of the suffering before death. Sometimes people say, I'm not worried about death. Death will be over, you know, and I don't got to worry. But it's the suffering part. And it's like, well, nobody likes to suffer because of sacrifice and suffering. Nobody likes it, but you'll be able to do it. Whatever it is God calls you to do. Uh, he will give you the strength to do in that moment. And He won't give you that kind of strength until you're in that moment. That's not something you prepare for. People say, well, you got to prepare yourself. No, you can't. You can prepare yourself in the sense of submission to God and, and uh, being in His Word and being in prayer and being in conversation and in love with Him and acting out in ways that He would, would be acting. Because that's what makes you Jesus with skin on, as people refer to it. Is he will use us to help others. And when we help others, it helps ourselves. Remember when he said it's better to give than to receive? He, he wasn't just saying that to be nice. He meant it will actually be better for you when you give than when you receive. It will do something in you. Little by little by little by little by little, God will chip away at you. And when he's finished, we will be like Christ. Y'all, I hope that's inspiring to you in the days that you fail. Because you're going to fail. I'm going to fail. And it feels awful. But we, what do we do? Do we turn to alcohol and drugs? Do we turn to pornography? Do we turn to even a friend? The best thing to do is turn to the ultimate friend, Jesus, and say, Hey, I failed and it feels awful. Please forgive me and help me not to do that again. Please forgive me and give me strength to act and walk my faith out. And Lord, you give me that faith that you want me to have. Because I'm even too weak for that. But strong enough to do this. You're my God. I'm not my God. You're my God. Please help me to do what you desire. And do you know what he says? That when you seek him, you'll find him when you seek him with all of your heart. And that you have not because you ask not or you ask with the wrong motive. So if our motive is to do what God wants and we're really truly seeking him, we will find him and we will be able to do what he wants because he will make it so. Anyway, I hope that's helpful to y'all today. I have no idea, just because the little monitor thing is so far away, I can never see. 
how far away I am. Got a little bit of time, but I feel like I've said what I needed to say. Um, like I said, there was no devotional. I think it was just, you know, whenever you go to a funeral, it makes you, when you face death, you can call it a passing away. or uh, I know it's when they're Christian and they're picked up by Jesus, but you're facing death. Death is awful. It's awful. That's why Jesus was willing to go to the cross, because it is so awful, and he wanted to, to save us from death and the wrath of God for sin, which is death, and beyond. And so when you go to a funeral, you are faced with the reality of this is a finite life. This is not what it's all about at all. The eternity is, is it's, it's eternal. This is finite. It's short. Eternity is forever. And it makes you do some self-examination. And I think that is good for all of us to stop and say, Lord, I, I don't know that I'm really using this life for you like I should be. Show me again and again and again I'm going to keep praying to you and I'm going to keep asking you until you bring me home I know one of the things that the pastor said uh, Keith Moore is so amazing I loved him and he said you know one of the best laid out prayers people think of the 23rd Psalm or, or other prayers in the Bible is oh God oh God Jesus 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 oh God oh God and do you know that when God hears that prayer, He knows exactly what you mean. And He knows how to answer it. We don't have to have fancy words. We have to have a humble heart and a humble spirit before God to bow and submit and say, I'm yours. Do whatever you want with me, but I need you. Please show me the way for today. And I'll worry about tomorrow then. Not not going to worry at all. Just We'll deal with that later. Okay, y'all. Well, I hope this helps you. And uh, maybe get alone and pray to the Lord some tonight, okay? All right. I love y'all. And I'll talk to you again soon. 